Today we are at the Katara Boutique Hotel and we are speaking to the one of the most talented jazz musicians in Balkans. In the world. <laughs> in the world, who is going to perform um, in, in the frame of Kotor Art, Don Branco's Music Days. This musician introduced completely authentic and new approach to fusion and jazz music. Thank you. Vesel Hadjimanov. It's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too. Um, so, Vasil, please tell you, how did you start playing piano? Why did you choose the piano and why jazz? Well, I haven't chosen piano. Uh, piano chose me, you know. But I was just a kid and uh, when I started playing piano, I was five, six, something like that. And then started going to primary mu music school because my parents are famous musicians and uh, uh, my father is a composer, actor, singer, uh, my mother was a singer, and my aunt that I'm actually performing in, at the Coder Art, she, obviously she's a singer too, so, so it was kind of a logical choice for me to, to go to music school just to see what's going to happen. So and when they asked me what mu instrument I would, would I like to play, I said piano. I didn't even think about it, I was just a kid. And then uh, further on I finished primary school and went to high school, uh, also studying music. Uh, you know, we have uh, in Belgrade and Serbia, we have music schools that are specifically for, mu uh, high, high schools that are specifically for music. So, but even then I wasn't really sure if that was a good idea or I, I wasn't into classical music that much, you know, I mean, I respected it, I liked it, but I never really felt like I was a performer of classical music. And then I discovered jazz uh, at the age of 14 or something like that and uh, started searching around my parents' uh, records and my aunt's records and that's where I found some of the records that I love to this day and that actually influenced me the most from uh, all jazz greats like Monk and Oscar Peterson to uh, the more, more contemporary um, musicians like Herbie Hancock and Keith Jarrett and Weather Report, Joe Zavino, Miles Davis, and so on. And uh, I didn't really understand the music, but I, I felt it, you know, something happened to me. But that's where I started uh, improvising and then trying to play the jazz standards and everything. And soon enough, I was finishing high school and uh, I wanted to go to Berkeley. And that's how the whole jazz thing really uh, uh, had uh, a closure of some kind in, in terms of education and, and at Berkeley then then you know that that was serious stuff you know you were actually over there you learn a lot from amazing teachers you play a lot with amazing musicians so uh, that's that was my road to to jazz music I will still ask you about Berkeley College of Music of course what did it mean to you, the whole process of education? And what's the biggest lesson did you learn while you were staying at college and in the US? Well, if you're interested in playing jazz music, there's no better place to go than the uh, United States. You know, that's their, their music. It's their folk music, basically. And, uh, or music of African-Americans that live in, uh, in America. Uh, but uh, so, and Berkeley is one of the best, if not the best school for, not only for jazz, for modern music, for contemporary music, and for uh, many different uh, uh, ways to express yourself, you know, in, in terms of searching for, for that thing. Or when you go there, you might have a, a certain thing in your mind, what, what, what you're interested in, but then you meet all this amazing musicians and composers and arrangers and and producers and uh, you know all kinds of different uh, experts in music young talented experts already and then may, you might switch to something else or or you, you don't even have to switch you, you you can gather knowledge from different sides you know you can get classes in film scoring even though you're on uh, studying 
saxophone or whatever, you know. Uh, so that's what I did. I actually uh, learned a lot from from uh, different perspectives in, in music and uh, and uh, in the simultaneously I I, uh, I played a lot. You know, that's that's the best class that you can get to play with musicians that are better than you. They know more than you, and that was an instant. Uh, schooling for me so I spent three years in Berkeley I, I graduated earlier because I saved some credits because of the education I had in um, in Serbia and then I decided to stay for two more years played in Boston and New York with some of the greatest young musicians then now they're not so young like like I am also uh, and uh, but uh, nevertheless they're really th the best you're still playing with them. I mean, you keep in from touch. from time to time. Yes, we we managed to bring uh, one of them, David Binney. He's a he's an amazing saxophone player from New York and an amazing composer also and producer. Uh, he came and we recorded a live album with my band Vasika Jumanov Band that uh, got it released on Moon June Records from New York and got uh, around 50 different uh, reviews from all over the world which are all written in, in, in the uh, superlative, how do you say it, you know? And uh, one of those reviews got us into the list of uh, the best albums of Downbeat uh, magazine for the last year. So, yes, David is one of the guys that I used to play with in New York and a friend of mine. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have a chance to bring m more uh, of my colleagues from, from over there I would like to. In the US, you worked at um, Tom and Andy studio uh -huh. as a composer. Yeah. And you were writing music for such movies like Killing Zoya. I, I wasn't, Richard. no, 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 I wasn't, uh -huh. it, it wasn't me writing music. It was Tom and Andy that did that. Ah, right. That's like a reference, you know, when you, when you write down your bio, you write down, uh, uh, whoever is the, you worked with, you write down who they worked with, you oh. know, so it, uh, uh, even if, if they know who, if they don't know who Tom and Andy are, you know, they can relate to Killing Zoe, the movie, or or anything else that they did. They did production for Laurie Anderson and, and such great, great stuff. Well, I, I worked in New York while my time in New York, I worked in, in their studio. I mm -hmm. programmed music and and uh, worked on, on some kind of software. It was a top secret, so I don't know. I don't even know what, what it was, but it was a great experience. And uh, although I, I, they got me uh, an artist visa to come back and work with them, I, I, I didn't. I never came back. I decided to stay in Belgrade, and uh, and I'm still in Belgrade, basically 20 years later. Why did you decide to come back? What was the motivation? Because uh, in one of your um, uh, biography description, uh, it said that you uh, wanted to finish something that you have studied in the US, and that's why you came back to the Balkans. Well, I never really know the right answer to this question. You know, it's, it's a matter of heart, uh, basically. You know, I, at, at one point, after five years living in America, I really felt homesick. and. Uh, and I felt that, that I, if I stay, although I had a great job at Tom and Andy's, I played with David Binney and uh, lots of other amazing musicians, uh, I didn't feel good, you know, I didn't feel good here in, in, inside, which really matters to me. And uh, I stayed and I, f uh, I never regretted it, you know. I mean, it's hard living in, in Serbia or the area of the Balkans, you know, and, and actually be a jazz uh, performer and composer in a place where jazz is not really the most popular music you know ever or although it's now it's not the most popular music anywhere but uh, but it's not easy but I still feel like I did the right thing I, I mean I managed to put a, this band together and we've been playing for 20 years and released six albums and I'm, I'm happy, you know, I mean, through all the struggle and, and uh, uh, the, the, the hard uh, things that, that, are, that are 
stopping you from from really creating and and having the the freedom to uh, to to you know play anywhere you want because that, that's one of the things that it's not good up around here the the claustrophobic uh, thing uh, happening with with the with the with the countries the small countries that they used to be ex Yugoslavia you know always the same subjects uh, lots of nationalist uh, subjects you know wasting time if you ask me instead of uh, getting together again and and doing business and exchanging culture and whatever you know friendship and everything so that's basically what's stopping us from really uh, playing even more and you know going further but luckily this release uh, that happened just now you know it's gonna help us to to go over the border more often and to to present our music uh, anywhere in the world you said you just mentioned that um, jazz is not really famous anywhere. What what do you think happening with jazz in Balkans, and what's the future of the jazz in Balkans? Oh, nobody knows that. You know, it's it's hard to tell. You know, because uh, the culture and and uh, our, um, music, creative music around here is not really supported. You know, you have. Uh, some festivals uh, like Kotor Art, which are great, you know, you have uh, certain uh, certain enthusiasts that uh, are willing to uh, book different bands or performers or concerts, but uh, the the ones that are actually uh, the ones that that have to think about the culture and the music and and to help it and support it. They don't do it, you know, and it's the same in Montenegro or in uh, Serbia. Not enough, as far as I'm concerned. You know, a lot of a lot of cheap uh, music, a lot of uh, shund, you know, uh, are, are are overwhelming. You know, the the youngsters and and they don't even know what jazz is and and uh, can't hear it on radio or, or anywhere basically. So it's really hard to tell what's going to happen. The, the good side of the story so we don't go uh, so that I, I, I don't get too depressing uh, is that there are a lot of a lot of musicians a lot of young musicians very talented musicians uh, from age of 14 15 to 25 6 uh, that they don't care about the circumstances that are surrounding their the scene and and uh, all the all the tough things that, that are happening that that are stopping them from performing they don't care they're making great music they're playing amazing they're much better than we used to be when we were kids so that's something to look forward to what is the memorable the most memorable advice that you were given by any of your teachers and who was the teacher oh that's a hard one I, I, I can't really remember the the one sentence advice you know but uh, my teachers at, at uh, at the music schools uh, were really good. I was really happy with them, both the classical ones and both in jazz. You know, my teacher in, in Berkeley was Ray Santisi, who was teacher of Key Jarrett and Chick Corea, I guess. And or so, you know, I worked with the best. And uh, uh, but one of them is crucial because at one point when I was searching for information about jazz music you know living in in belgrade yugoslavia eight the late 80s you know when i started to listen to jazz um, you couldn't find it you know it, there was no internet there was no uh, any, any any information that, of that kind uh, so you had to search it uh, f uh, mouth to mouth you know uh, uh, and uh, uh, the only one that that really helped me was uh, Voin Drashkoci. He's a he's an amazing late uh, bass player and uh, composer, and he actually worked with me, and that's how I ended up uh, ended up uh, going to the states. Regarding your uh, album Alive, I will say a quote: uh, "Unpredictable and unpretentious, at times hypnotic, at times pushing the envelope and flattening boundaries." So, what was the message that you wanted to convey with this album? 
Well, there are a lot of messages, you know, you, that you have to find yourself in it, you know. I mean, we, we when, when I and when, when my, my band makes music, we don't really have a certain concept uh, that's strict, you know, that we have this idea that's going to be uh, put out in this way and, and everything has to be uh, in, in those frames, you know, and, and uh, we let it loose, you know, we let it loose and what comes natural, what comes spontaneous, that's what happens and then we decide if we like it or not and if it has anything to do with any of the other material that we already uh, are playing or composed. So the messages are uh, in in these uh, in this kind of music, you know, you 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 find your own messages. You have to relate to whatever we are sending you, and if you see it in your own light and your own way, and you understand something your own way, it's okay. You know, I'm not gonna write it down for you what what it means. You know, it's it's um, very open, very free, and uh, and. As long as you feel something, that means that we succeeded. Name three um, most prominent jazz musicians in Balkans. Three most prominent. Uh, well, I would like to uh, mention the, the young cats that are actually uh, the ones that I talked about uh, earlier. Uh, one of them is our drummer, Peja Milutinovic. He plays with us for five years now uh, and he was also planning to go to Berkeley I don't know if he's gonna succeed because he needs a really big scholarship but uh, he's a phenomenal musician that that uh, uh, represents the the, the, the the young generation uh, that I'm talking about you know and he can play with anyone. David, when he was in Belgrade, when he heard him, and Pera Krstajic, who's another one, if I have to mention three, uh, is an amazing bass player that's at Berkeley now. He immediately called him and had a, made a, a new trio with uh, Pera and Peja, and they went to play in a jazz festival in Malta and recorded an album together. And Pera is now, he was then 18, and Peja was 23, something like that. So, really young, coming from Serbia, never studied anywhere until Pera went to Berkeley, but he was amazing even before. And the third one is also very young, Rastko Bradovic. He's, uh, he was just finishing his studies in, in Norway. All three of them are exceptional, and you can basically put them on any stage to play with any of the greats and I'm sure they, they're going to be blown away with them. You are sent to an island. Okay. <laughs> Which three albums are you taking with you? I would take an iPod, that's what I would take. <laughs> and uh, uh, a battery with, uh, that works on solar energy. And then I would have to take uh, three albums. I, would, I could take 3,000 albums. Uh, what sacrifices have you had to make in order to become a successful musician? Oh, terrible sacrifices, horrible. I, I can't even talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, everyone has, has to sacrifice in, 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 in any, uh, you know, in some way, because um, if you want to do what you like, and if you, if you only want to do that, then you have to do everything in your power to, to accomplish that, you know? So my time in the States wasn't easy, you know, uh, it, when we talk about it, it seems like, ah, oh, you know, he was studying, he was playing with all these great musicians, got a job, you know, wonderful. But it wasn't like that all, all, all the time, you know, I mean, it's not easy to, to move to a completely different country and, and to start over, and especially in New York. New York is a very tough city to live in. Uh, now even more than then, um, but um, not only that, you know, I mean, uh, uh, in terms of if financial uh, troubles, you know, I went through, I wasn't poor or sleeping on the street, but, but you know, there were times when, when we were struggling, but I managed to pull it through and to continue working only on, on projects that I 
think are worth working on, you know. It doesn't have to be jazz, it can be film scoring, it can be uh, any kind of band that I play with, but uh, all the choices I made, I made them because of the music that I was working on, not because of the money, not because of the fame or whatever it might be the reason to, to be in the music business. Final question. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Perfect happiness? happiness. I don't think it, it exists, but uh, let's pretend that it exists. Uh, music all around me, happiness, love and uh, peace, world peace. <laughs> As they say on the Miss uh, competition. <laughs> Uh, but I really believe that. I think that the only uh, way to, for the human race to survive is to stop talking about stupid uh, things like who's, uh, uh, whose race, uh, who, who, who really religion, race, uh, nationality, you know, and all that. I'm so sick of it, you know. And I think that uh, in 2017 it's, it's about time to stop all that talk and turn the other way and uh, and and uh, we are brothers and sisters and just enjoy life and have peace and have world peace of course thank you so much thank you for the conversation that was Vasil Hadjimanov thank you